I was asked to go and test a data warehouse for a client um, and I had not really tested the data warehouse before, certainly not on this scale. So um, I was quite anxious because um, it was new to me, but that also made me quite excited as well because I, I like doing things that are new and learning new things. So it was an opportunity and a challenge rather than something to shy away from. I was brought in to troubleshoot. Testing had already started. The uh, data warehouse solution had already been delivered and actually they were probably about two months away from their, their shipping date, well, their sort of release go-live date, um, when they suddenly decided they needed some help with testing. They did have testers in the project team who were um, responsible for doing the testing, but they weren't experienced testers. They were One of them was a, a business analyst and the other was a trainer. Um, so while they had really good business knowledge and knew about the, I was asked to go and test a data warehouse for a client. Um, I had not really tested the data warehouse before, certainly not on this scale. So um, I was quite anxious because um, it was new to me. But that also made me quite excited as well because I, I like doing things that are new and learning new things. So it was an opportunity and a challenge rather than something to shy away from. I was brought in to troubleshoot. Testing had already started the uh, data warehouse solution had already been delivered and actually they were probably about two months away from their, their shipping date, well their sort of release go live date, um, when they suddenly decided they needed some help with testing. They did have testers in the project team who were um, responsible for doing the testing but they weren't experienced testers, they were, one of them was a, a business analyst and the other was a trainer. Um, so while they had really good business knowledge and knew about the data that was going to be involved, they didn't know how to approach testing. The first thing I did was have a look to see if they had um, a testing strategy or a test plan. And when I asked them for it, I basically got given a, a timeline with some words around it, um, which wasn't promising. So. And the first thing I did was try and put some more words around it and try and glean some information from the, the project manager about what would normally be in the sort of test plan I would produce. So, you know, what was the scope of, of the project, um, who was going to be involved in testing, uh, what resources did we have, what did the data look like, what were the risks to the project and how were we going to approach testing. They didn't want a big, massive framework that was going to fit the whole organisation. It was a very small team. They really weren't interested in making it reusable for any other department. Um, so I just focused on delivering what was going to give them value and what was going to give them results. I've done quite a bit of a just normal functional testing with a GUI, but obviously data warehouse testing is slightly different in that you, you don't Always, you have a GUI if you look at the report side, but uh, you don't have a GUI in between, so it's very much down at the data level. Um, so we had to bring in some SQL experts who could do some queries for us um, and help us figure out how we were going to test each stage of the the uh, process of transforming the data. So one of the first things I did um, after creating a an outline plan of the sorts of things I was uh, going to need to look at was, uh, actually I probably did it before that, um, was do a bit of research on data warehouse testing, or uh, data warehouses and what a data warehouse was. The sorts of things that makes a data warehouse different is the, the data that's in it. So normal databases that add to relational databases tend to be showing you a picture of what's happening now, so it's individual transactions coming in and out, whereas a data warehouse would be more about the trends and the progress that that data can, can show you. Uh, and that's why at the end of it, you quite often have reports to sort of bring that out and uh, give you the information in a format that you can then read and make decisions based on that. I, I think it should be bespoke because it, it depends on all sorts of things in, you know, in the context of the project, but there are certain things that you know, can be done that are similar on, on all data warehouse projects. So a couple of things we picked up through the mistakes that have been learned on this project were um, 
typical things that actually apply to all projects that the requirements weren't firmed down. There was loads and loads of assumptions around the requirements that the supplier of the data warehouse hadn't documented. So they had gone off and made these assumptions and developed the solution. And then when we came to test it, we realised, talking to the users, that wasn't what was wanted. Um, when I first joined the project as well, the other thing that struck me was the test team, as they were two people, um, were really, really struggling because they didn't have a formal process of um, keeping their test scripts and recording defects in a easy to access way. Um, so, and they were getting very sort of in, into the low level testing that actually should have been done by the supplier. Um, because what they were finding was that the very basics weren't there. So instead of saying, right, the basics are not there, and passing that back to the supplier and saying, it's your job to go and make it be there, they were doing a lot of investigation for them, which was good because it got to the root of the problem, but it really shouldn't have been down to the project team at that stage to be finding that out. So they kept getting further and further down into this, this low-level detail, and the project manager was pulling his hair out because... He had no idea whether the full solution was anywhere near what they'd asked for because they weren't getting that far on in testing. The other techniques that I brought in was to sort of apply a risk-based approach. So we identified um, to give the project manager a, a better view of whether it was all there, half of it was there, you know, whether there was just really nothing there at all. Um, we picked out I said to them a top 10, first of all, but actually became a top 15 uh, common pathways, we called them. So we identified where was most of the data going to come through, what what things could happen to this data. And it was almost like the top 10 scenarios that could happen. Uh, the data was actually re relating to patient records. Um, so what were the top 10 routes that this patient record could go through, what could happen to it. We took a look at the, the volumes that were going through that and then we also looked at where was it critical that we picked up the data the most. And of course they wanted everything, but managed to pin them down and say, look, if, if, it's, if there's going to be one part of it that you can wait for, what, what would it be? So we managed to trim it down and, and get them to identify and say it stretched beyond the top 10, became a top 15, but that worked. And we used that as a basis then for driving the testing, making sure that we focused on this top 15 and then when we were happy with the top 15, moved on to some of the other areas as well. I, I think they were quite naive. Um, the project team were hoping that they could do it all in-house um, without having to resort to external assistance. Um, but their own experience showed them that it, it wasn't really going to work like that. One of the really um, good things that I felt I brought to the project was that once I left and they only had a certain amount of budget because you know, it was public sector and there was not much money going around but uh, one of the, the good things that I felt I left them with was they had a much better understanding of testing and they had a much better appreciation of why they needed to approach it in the way that I advised them to approach it. So I kind of did myself out a job in a way but you know they were well set up for the next phase um, when that came along. If you don't know what you're doing with testing and you think you are testing something, you could be giving bad information back to your managers, giving them a picture that isn't actually true. And that's all testing does. It gives you a picture of what you think is happening. Um, if you have experienced testers, they can bring their experience to it and they can give you a more realistic picture. They can give you perhaps a more accurate one. Um, but they can't do that on their own either. The experienced testers have to work very closely with the people who use the systems and know the business. So it's, a, it's got to be a joint effort. I don't think you can have one or the other. Um, but yeah, I think if, if you have the experience of the tester brought in, then uh, they can certainly help the business get what they want from testing and then move on.